Good afternoon, everybody, and, and welcome back to our weekly webinar. Great to see so many of you engaging in this every week, and hopefully we're still providing information and resources um, that's relevant for you to help you get through this period, which of course is the aim of these weekly webinars. Um, we actually expanded our Zoom licence last week because we had pretty much full capacity the last couple of weeks. So as always, if you'd like anyone else from your club uh, to log in to these meetings, please feel free to uh, forward on the invitation and the link to join the webinars. We have now ex expanded the Zoom licence so we can have more than 100 people on at, uh, at any time. Um, usual process today, if there's any questions, please just put them in the, the chat on the side of the Zoom and we'll try to get to some at the end, but normally we don't get to, but we will address any of those questions in the, the Friday email and any other resources that we put up on the website. It's been a massive week um, for us at GA, but also more importantly, more broadly in the world of sport and community sport, especially in the last few days in respect of all things COVID. As we mentioned last week, the talk is increasingly turning to reactivation, which is fantastic. And this was only confirmed with the release last Friday by the National Cabinet of the National Principles for Sport and Recreation Activities and also the AIS framework for rebooting sport. Now, both those documents, there's links to both those documents on our website, on the GA website. And I really strongly encourage all of you, if you haven't already, to read those, uh, those two documents, those two guidelines for rebooting sport. The AIS framework in particular is very comprehensive and very pragmatic. And it really provides the guidelines for how we can get back to opening our doors. And I know that's what's most important to each and every one of us. It should be said, though, that those, they are national principles, they are national guidelines, and they're still reliant on local authorities and local geographic jurisdictions. So your state and territories and how they want to interpret. Northern Territory, we know, has already made the decision to open doors on the 15th of May, which is absolutely fantastic. South Australia, I think, is also looking to move to that tier B. But all these principles will be reliant on your uh, your state or territory jurisdiction, uh, allowing them to be implemented. And I know your, the state and territory associations are working very closely with your respective state governments uh, to make sure they're in that conversation and to try and, and fast track as much as possible the reopening of doors. We do have to recognise though that the reopening, it will be staggered and it will be gradual. And for many people, it will still be weeks away. I hesitate to say months away, but it still may be months away for some states and some jurisdictions, and we need to be prepared for that. But like many of you, um, I'm sure I'm very keen to get a lot more specific information from those national principles about what exactly does that mean for us as gymnastics clubs, especially as it relates to social distancing. How can we run a kinder gym class? How can we spot an athlete doing a skill with social distancing and also very specifically about the hygiene of clubs and equipment cleaning. Now that's something we've been really focused on in the last few days and I've had many conversations with our equipment partner AMCO and also Spieth. So next week's webinar will be focused on club and equipment hygiene and cleaning and I think that's going to be a key point to make sure that when we do open our doors, we can do so adhering to those national principles. So that will be next week on our webinar, our club and equipment um, cleaning and hygiene, once we're at a stage where we can reopen. Also in the broader sports sector, uh, late last week, uh, good news nationally with the release of the Play data, with gymnastics again being in the top three most participated sports or activities for kids under the age of 15 in Australia. Now that data is fantastic, it confirms what we all know, but I think at this time it's also especially good data as we look to re-engage with our participants and get our membership back up to the levels that we have had in previous years. On the GA front, it's also been a big week. Um, we had a great response to the announcement of our month of online education for May, being our month of online education and professional development. Just a quick reminder, 30% discount on intermediate coaching courses 
and 40% discount on advanced courses. So a really great way to help keep your coaches engaged during this period of, of downtime. Uh, also some great news on the insurance front. A couple of weeks ago, there was a lot of discussion about the one hand, one foot parameter. Um, great credit to Brad Lowe, our general manager of Milk member services, who's been doing, having a lot of conversations with our insurers, Marsh and Sports Cover. They've agreed to relax those parameters around the one hand, one foot. So we're preparing a fact sheet on those new parameters and that will be out by this Friday. So that's great. So that will provide um, more relaxed guidelines to at home activities. It will still of course adhere to the coach skills matrix, but excitingly, it will also allow for some equipment to be used at home. So thank you to Brad for all the, uh, the work that you've done with Marsh on that and exciting news for everybody. And that, uh, that fact sheet will be out on Friday. Okay, now to today's special guests. Um, as I said earlier, any reactivation of our clubs will be staggered and will be gradual. So clubs will not be able to return to normal operations immediately. So there is still a need now, and there, there likely still will be a need for some time to engage with your members online and to, so that they can still participate in gymnastics classes and activities during this period and beyond. For this reason, uh, Gymnastics Australia has partnered, and we're very excited to announce that we've partnered with My Gym Is Online to ensure that you can offer classes and resources to your members during this time and beyond. So as part of this partnership with My Gym Is Online, Gymnastics Australia will cover the setup costs for any affiliated club who wants to sign up and set up with My Gym Is Online. And obviously we, we strongly encourage you to do that. So I'd like to introduce and thank very much for giving up their time, I think late in the night it must be, from Canada, um, Lorraine Curry and Daniel from My Gym Is Online. Lorraine, I think will be known to many of you. She's spoken at the, uh, the GV Leading Jobs Conference a couple of years ago. Um, Lorraine and Daniel own Futures Gymnastics and Dance Works in Canada. And they obviously saw during this period that there was a real need to develop a secure online platform and programs through which clubs could deliver online classes to, uh, to retain that engagement with their members. I know several clubs in Australia are already subscribed to My Gym Is Online and they've reported huge success and they're very happy with it. So we thought it was a great opportunity to partner nationally with My Gym Is Online and to offer you that opportunity for those free setup costs um, to work with My Gym Is Online for the benefit of your members during this period and, and beyond. So I'll hand over to Lorraine and Daniel now. Thank you again very much for joining us and we um, really look forward to hearing about your, your platform and your programs. Over to you guys. Perfect. Um, I have to say that it's one of the uh, biggest things that's come out of this journey with My Gym Is Online is the world is one place at the moment no matter who i speak to around the world we're all in the exact same situation at the exact same moment in time and um like i've just met so many people and had such a great connection simply because of that like i've never seen anything like that before where no matter what country i'm talking to they're in the exact same situation so um thank you for having me back um yes when we got we got um mandated to close um, March 15th. So we kind of had some rumblings around the um, 10th, 11th, 12th that something might be coming. And so we switched over all of our classes immediately to filming and filmed all of our, while the children was, were still there, filmed classes, like 30 minute classes. We filmed all of our conditioning activities. Uh, we filmed cooking classes. We filmed crafts and activities whatever we could think of during that time because we were actually on our spring break uh, from school and um, and we we got it we gathered up about 400 videos um, over the over that first week or so then the children on the 15th we had no longer had children but we're still continuing to film and we wanted to create a website where our parents could go um, and have activities we actually called ours my my online day camp because we knew the kids were gonna be at home and for an extended period of time, they were gonna be out of school for months. 
because um, they were already out of school for a week uh, before the closure, because as I said, we were on our March break. So all of March, April, and May, they were likely to be out. Then for June, July, and August, we'd be in summer. So they're, they're not going back to school till September now. So we wanted to provide that day camp experience at home. And I reached out to Daniel because we had been working on a project um, a few years prior to that. I think if you remember correctly, we were talking about our staff training and how we had a university where the staff would take courses and had to be tracked. So I asked Daniel, what, could that software um, be able to house all of our videos um, in a safe way? Because safe sport is a, is a big deal to us and we didn't just want to hand out Zoom codes willy nilly. So Daniel said, absolutely it could. And not only that, in the in the time between when we had developed the staff university, the site now had a lot more features to it. So it was really interesting as we started to dive in just everything the site could do for us. And immediately we wanted to make sure that we found a way to keep our customers connected to us because I don't know for all of you if it's the same, but um, the longer someone's away from the business, the less chance there is that they might drift back or the longer it might take to get them to come back. So we wanted to make sure that right away they had a connection. So um, as I said, we reached out to Daniel and my gym is online was born. <laughs> and then we noticed it's a big deal to me in our province um, and in Canada that every gym is vital to our sport. There's no such thing as competition at this point. It's all about making sure that our sport survives and stays healthy for the future. And so we donated all of our videos to any club that wanted it. And Daniel helped them set up their own site with their own logo, their own contact information, but it's our content um, because a lot of clubs didn't have the opportunity anymore. They're out of their facilities. Um, some are run by city programs. They can't even get in their facility, with it, even if they wanted to film. Um, and so we donated all of it uh, to My Gym is Online and any club can have it now. Um, and Daniel will show you a little bit more about it. And then as we had more clubs come on, some wanted, to, some did have their own content. So then it grew a little bit and we now have options with some of your content, some of our content, and then some um, were ready to take this on for the future as well as the present. And we came up with a package that works for them. You'll, you'll see a few of those, Delta, Jubilee, there's a, a few that are already doing that. Um, and what we've discovered is that we've hit a paradigm shift for sure in how our, our programs can be delivered. It absolutely changed the day that we closed down. So we learned very quickly how to teach gymnastics um, remotely, how to teach it in somebody else's home. And not only just like do a warm up or conditioning, something like that, but to actually engage the kids and have a quality class outside of the facility. And so now we've discovered, hmm, we can offer this to uh, daycare centers and nursery schools without even having to leave our facility. We can come in remotely into um, schools that can't get to us um, in any other way. Uh, we've now reached out to Indigenous communities that don't have access to community services like this at all. And through, so long as they have internet, they now have access to gymnastics, dance, cheerleading, martial arts. We have uh, ninja programs. There's yoga. Uh, there's, like I said, there's cooking classes. There's um, reading, there's academics on there. So there's all kinds of things that uh, clubs outside can now utilize. So it changed how we were thinking about things. We have dry land training in there now. So we have um, soccer, baseball, um, football, those sorts of programs now are contacting us to get train dry land training through our site. So it definitely has changed. We're not making the same money that we were making while we were open by any means and nothing's ever gonna replace the live class but it definitely has managed to keep um, a revenue stream coming in um, and give all of our, our parents, uh, we have live classes every day now. So they, they run through the site, Daniel can show you that. Um, so they log into our site and then they, depending on what level they are, they can see different kinds of Zoom classes. So they go in, they can take a class, they can come out and go in and try something else in the afternoon. Um, and we're actually gonna be opening next week, day camp online. So they will actually join one of our instructors for the afternoon because um, we're all doing homeschooling right now. So parents are trying to work from home, do homeschooling at home, look after their kids, do all that sort of thing. So we're going to take over that for them for the afternoon. So that's new coming up next week. Um, and we've recognized that this is not going to go back. Even when we are we allowed to open, our parents are going to want this um, additional service that we now have. Plus, like, 
like uh, Kitty said, it is gonna take a long time before classes appear normal. Um, so with having to social distance and possibly in our club, we're gonna spread the classes apart. So there's a minimum of 15 minutes between classes, time for us to get one batch out of the building, the next batch in the building while another group are cleaning inside the facility. Um, so we recognize that we're not going to be able to sustain the same numbers that we know we normally had about 4,000 kids and there's no way that our numbers are going to hit that in the next year. So this will be able to supplement and we'll be able to offer the same price for our classes, if not enhanced pricing because they now have more, but some of that class will take place in their homes. So it's making it much easier for us to navigate. So I'm going to stop gabbing because I could talk for the entire half hour <laughs> about, about um, all, the, um, all the exciting things that it's actually opened up for us. So I'm going to hand off to Daniel because he can actually show you how it works. And I'm just going to gab about how it works. So. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Lorraine. And thanks, Kitty. It's a pleasure to meet you. Um, and everyone else, thank you very much for uh, entertaining our session today. I know a lot of the stuff that I'm going to show is web stuff. And I've done this enough times that I can see the eyes gloss over once I start getting technical. So I'm going to try really hard not to do that and talk from a perspective of a gym club owner and what this means to you having the web platform. So I'm just gonna go and share my screen uh, before dun, dun, share, dun, here. Okay, so I am now sharing my screen. Hopefully you see my gym is online. Yep. Is that, okay, awesome. What we want to um, get across is we're trying to emulate what you have as a facility. So picture the website as the door to your facility. And when a parent comes in, they're registering their child to a course, to a program. We're doing the exact same thing on your website where we help you set up your courses, your programs online so that your parents can register for either a recreational, a dance, a competitive course, and see only the items and content that they're supposed to see. You don't, want to, you don't want to have a rec child seeing competitive athlete training. You don't need to have a competitive um, gym, gymnast looking at cheerleading aspects uh, or training material. You want to keep it focused. At the same time, you want to use it as a marketing material so that new audiences coming in can see the, the diversity of content and service you offer. So what we have is a look and feel that we've we can maintain. So we talked about um, setting up. It does take a while for us to set up a site and Gymnastic Australia is gonna take care of that for you. Depending on which um, package you go with, we'll decide what we do and what, and what we put in. In the case that you see in front of you, we have a competitive registration and a rec recreational uh, registration. So let's take, for example, you have a on-demand training video, which is just basically looking at videos online anytime you want. And you have lives, we call them Zoom classes because that's the most popular one. You also have a competitive area where the same uh, audience may have access to different on-demand training videos and live class sessions. So I'm gonna go ahead and register with a code. And I'm gonna say, So what I'm doing here is pretending I am a parent and I want to have access to um, your video library as well as your live Zoom sessions. I'm a recreational parent, so I'm only allowed to see certain content and certain uh, schedules. I'm going to sign up. And it takes me to a welcome page. The welcome page is your terms of service as well as access to the different videos. So we can see that we have community li library and live uh, rec sessions. So if I click on community library, I get hundreds of videos that Lorraine has provided. If I click on competitive gymnastics, in this page, we have access to 98 sessions and videos. And we keep them in one area so that, imagine having 98 pages to scroll through. It's just too much. If I click on, for example, dance, I have 31 sessions here that I can go through. Again, we, wanted, we try to make everything 
easy uh, for the children, for the students, because at the end of the day, that's really who our audience is. If the children and the students and athletes aren't using the platform, then the parents won't be susceptible to keeping their, their account online. So we really wanna make sure that's easy to navigate. If I click on live web sessions, this is the schedule, an example schedule of the Zoom classes. And it's done in such a way where the parent only has to register and register for the class or program. And now the child can log in and click on any of the links and it opens up that Zoom meeting. What that means for you is you no longer have to send out emails for with the Zoom meeting links. It's safer so that you know that only the people who are registered in the program have access to the schedule. And it gives you a brand. Every time they come to your website to log in to, see, to get access to the schedule, they're seeing anything you promote on your site. So that's three things that you have there. If you have more uh, programs, we can set it up so that you can register for all the different programs you have. So for example, dragging registration, I click on here, and now I can just simply be part of that group by uh, entering a code. Um, and we'll talk about codes in, in some of our later workshops uh, that we're gonna be providing. For now, a code is a way that we uh, help integrate with your payment processor whether it is Jackrabbit, iClass Pro, or uh, any other type of payment system, we provide you a code that lets you accept payments directly. In return, once you receive payments, you send a code to the parent who is registered, and that allows them to register. So I am gonna, uh, one more time, click on Video Library, and notice the tiles that I have access. I'm gonna click on the Live Web Sessions, and notice that I have these sessions here. If I click on Wednesday, 12 p.m., I only have one session here. So you're able to add different sessions according to your schedule. I'm gonna log out now, and now I'm gonna take the role as a competitive parent. I'm gonna come and register with a code. Again, so now I'm registering with a competitive registration, and it's a different URL. And this, this is the one, part that we felt, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Yeah, I was going to say, this is the part that really, um, we wanted to make sure that we were adhering to safe sports. So we also have a handout and some recommendations um, in terms of uh, operating Zoom classes or doing live classes. Just some little tricks that you can not only help improve the quality, but help improve safe sport as well, so. Exactly. Um, so I'm registering as a competitive parent now. And when I sign up, again, it takes me to the welcome page. But now if I click on my library, you can see I have access to additional programs that I didn't have as a rec parent. If I click on the live web sessions, you can see I have different week one, week two, week three, whereas the rec parent didn't have access to these, week, uh, these weekly sessions. At the end of the day, that is the most important thing that you can offer your customers. The ability to register securely, log in and see the sessions and the content, the videos that's applicable to their child. As a parent, I have two kids, two teenagers. They've been training, my son's been training for 10 years, my daughter's been training eight years. And we like consistency. We like to know that we're coming in to an area portal that contains only the information that we need because there's just so much out there. We really need to have uh, a place where I know that my child can log in and everything there is already taken care of professionally by the people I trust. And that's what we do here. We provide all that for you. And again, if I need to register for a specific group, I come in here, for example, if, if I'm log, uh, registering for preschool, I just put the code in and now I would be um, able to see the sessions for preschool. They only have to do that the first time they, they register. Yeah. Exactly. The big thing that we found, because we didn't actually set out to do this. This was kind of something that happened where, you know, Lorraine and I talked and, and we've known each other for years. So uh, I have my skill sets, Lorraine has her skill sets, and we put this together. And then uh, other gym clubs came and asked, you know, for help. And we said, yes, sure, of course. Because um, like Lorraine said, the, it's the community, the industry that, we, that needs to survive together. 
And then it just uh, expanded and, and we're now across the United States. We even have in Mexico, the UK, and of course, Australia. But what has happened is something much bigger. We've become a global community. Um, we're actually creating an ecosystem that wasn't possible before where it's not only you as a gym, gym club owner, it's also the parents and the children, the athletes that are involved in the same community. Because as we expand, we're learning a lot. This look and feel is completely different from the original template that we set out. It's, mm-hmm. it's, the, the original is God awful compared to what we have now. Yeah. Um, and <laughs> the idea is, for example, uh, even as, as, as of two days ago, we didn't have a, a, a page for where you can actually click on the different programs, the different courses. So this is the kind of things that as a community, we're learning together. So what works, we take and then we offer to the whole community. And what doesn't work, we pull out. We're also taking the input from all the uh, gym club owners of what you need to succeed. So the platform has been built from the ground up meaning it's all our code. We're not, uh, we don't have any WordPress plugins. We're not part of Shopify or anything like that. This is a platform that's built from the ground up and the code is, is proprietary owned. So we can build into it. We have uh, on, mm-hmm. on track a lot of different modules that we're, we're looking at um, bring to the forefront that will help you not only uh, engage parents and children, but also give you an additional tools to generate revenue and sustain a model that will keep you going both online and also complimenting you when we get back to normal. And I'm going to stop it there because I can go on and on and on. (laughs) (laughs) Any questions on that? Uh, I know that we have the chat here. Uh, So I I think we've had, um, Sorry, am I muted? No, I think there's been a lot of fantastic questions that have come through, Lorraine and Daniel. That was um, that was a fantastic overview. Um, we'll deal with the questions as we normally do, I think, because there are so many really good ones that have come through in our FAQs with the Friday email, if that's okay. Yeah, I do, I, Thank you. And if we need to um, uh, get in touch with you with any details, Lorraine, did you want to wrap it up with how people actually sort of sign up, what the, what the deal is? Sure, you can um, go, just go to mygymisonline.com and there's a page there specifically set up for Australia. Daniel, it's just evident. Uh, right why don't we, um, it's, we it's have a the, special um, link. Yeah, it's in the chat now. Brad's just put it up yeah. in the chat. Yeah. We'll, we'll yeah. also yeah. have Friday's email if anyone right. Because yep. you guys are getting something different that no one in North America is getting. So Yeah, so don't um, tell anyone. <laughs> <laughs> and we want to make sure that as we can add things on that it's specific to Australia. Because um, all of our videos have just our plain old accent. We don't have, a, we don't have anything cool like that. So you, eventually you'll, you're going to want to replace it with content that's specific to the Australian culture as well. So um, I know Gymnastics Australia wants to be able to put up some training things for you. And there's a parent section where you can put things up. There's quite a, quite a few things that we can add. Uh, whatever, whatever the needs of the club are, we think we can meet them. So, yeah. And just one quick question on that, Lorraine. And while I've said we're not dealing with questions, I think this is a good one. For <laughs> if, if people have already signed up previously, yep. Um, yep. will they be able to get access to the new Australian content? Yes. Or Yep. Okay. Yep. Yep. Easy, easy. Fantastic. Yep. Good. Okay. Emma, I think that was an answer to your question. <laughs> um, another question that came through from Sky and a really good question that we spoke about a little while ago was whether Marsh and our insurers would cover overseas content. So we've had that discussion with Marsh specifically about My Gym is Online. They've seen the product and they're very happy with it and we obviously endorse it. Yeah. Um, so the answer to that question is yes, that through our partnership, all the content that appears on My Gym is online for anyone that signs up will be covered, so long, obviously, as it's within the, um, the athlete skill level and the coach's accreditation right. level, so that's right. great. It's been, kept, it's been kept to a level that could be safe at home, no matter whether they were in a 600-foot, square foot, or we would call it meters. <laughs> Um, apartment. We're Canadian. We use metric, but only occasionally, apparently. Um, if, you know, if they were in a small apartment or a large home, it, it needs to be safe. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
I think everyone will agree that was that was a fascinating presentation and, and what you've done, Lorraine and Daniel, and the fact that, you know, initially you offered all those videos up for free. I, I think your comment that we're all in this together, um, yeah. there's no competition anymore. <laughs> we're all about gymnastics. We're right. all about enabling access to gymnastics for our members, for our clubs, for our states and territories. So I think it's that's, that's right. a really good point that um, as much as we can help help each other, that's what it's about. Um, fantastic also to see your focus on child safety. We had a session last week in our webinar about that. I know that's that's a great priority for you and it, it's it's yep. a huge priority for us to make sure that Definitely. everything we deliver online is um, child safe. So great okay. to see your, your focus on that. So thank you both um, very much. Um, Brad has put the link up on, um, on the chat that we'll include it in Friday's email. So really encourage you to have a look, have a further look, sign up. Um, There's a webinar tomorrow, tomorrow morning for you guys as well. There's a webinar. Okay. Wednesday, and right? Learn a lot more about it there. Yeah. Okay, fantastic. All right. I, I appreciate you staying up till almost midnight and also rushing through <laughs> what's very complex in half an hour. Daniel, you did very well to thank you your, your technical technical oversight to um to this half hour space. Um, thank you very much, everyone, very much for joining us again. Great to see you all. Um, Remember to sign up to our education courses and education professional development line. Have a look at those national principles in the AIS framework for rebooting sport. That's going to be really important. And next week's webinar, we'll be talking about that, about social distancing and safe hygiene for gyms and equipment uh, as we look to reopen. So thanks, everyone. Huge thank, thank you, Ryan and Daniel. And um, see you next week. Bye. Pleasure. Thank you. Bye-bye.